Seth Doan has found a sweet Christmas story in a pretty unlikely place. As towering Christmas trees pack piazzas across Italy, there's a smaller yet no less significant holiday staple filling pastry chef's ovens and schedules. We make uh, about 1,500 each day. Each day? Each day, yes. That's a, that's a lot of benedone. That's, that's a lot, that's a lot. It's a necessary pace, Ascanio Brozzetti explains, to help feed Italy's national obsession with this bread-like dessert, panettone. Everyone will have a panettone on the table Christmas Day. Everyone, everyone. Different kinds, also different prices, but everyone will have one. He works for Giotto. While they use common ingredients, some with candied fruits, like orange or lemon. And follow a baking process which honors centuries of tradition, this panettone is unique. Because while some bakeries keep special recipes under wraps, this one has the entire facility locked down. This is not your typical front door key. <laughs> Giotto's bakery is located inside a prison. Due Palazzi near Padua in Italy's northeast. Here, those convicted of heinous crimes can nurture their sweeter side. <laughs> Professional staff, including Brozzetti, work with about 50 inmates to build skills. È una sorpresa se vedi un cotello così grande nel prigione. It's a little strange to see a, a, a knife this big in a prison. Sì, si, primi tempi, sì. Si. At first, yes, Giovanni acknowledged, noting at the prison cafeteria they're only allowed to use plastic knives. Inmates are screened and selected for this work, which around the holidays focuses on their artisanal panettone, cooled upside down to keep its form. They've won some of Italy's top culinary prizes. Prima la vita era vuota. Before life was empty, this inmate told us, now you can start seeing the light. There's a pride here, they say, in the quality of the product. Organizers requested we not use prisoners' full names or ask about their crimes, but Joel volunteered what landed him here. I did a bad thing. I committed a homicide, he told us. I'll bring that with me forever, but when I'm working, those thoughts disappear. Before I was a street boy, he said, and I wonder if maybe I had the opportunity to have a job, to do something important, maybe I wouldn't be here. When he's released, he'd like to open his own bakery. This is not a charity, this is, this no. is a business for you. Yes. Yes, the idea is to make money to maintain all of this, Matteo Marchetto told us. He leads the non-profit organization known as a cooperative, which manages Giotto. They've employed about 300 prisoners in the last 17 years. We hire them like outside, he explained. Some of the money they make they send to families and may transform themselves from a problem to a resource. Resource. When we first entered the prison with Marchetto, we passed walls with giant posters of pastry chefs, as a school might celebrate its best students. In Italy, there are prisoners who harvest an island vineyard for the Frescobaldi winery, others who work a farm and make cheese. We visited a prison that runs a restaurant on special nights. It's a mix of public and private efforts to prepare inmates for life after prison. Many of the inmate bakers for Giotto have not seen the sleek cafe in downtown Padua where some of their delicacies are sold. You get some tax breaks per employee in the prison, but wouldn't it be easier just to build a kitchen and make your panettone here? Probably yes, it would be easier, but that is not our aim, Matteo Marchetto told us. There's something very important in the Italian Constitution, Article 27. The aim of the sentence is to re-educate, to rehabilitate. So that is our aim, to create a possibility through work and a real job. Should we try some? Yes.
And that's something that could make this ubiquitous, if not universally loved pastry, appealing to almost anyone.